Hello and welcome back my friends. Today I'm going to be inoculating some hardwood oak logs with both shiitake and oyster mushroom dowel spawn. I'm also going to be establishing a small patch morel mushrooms. Slightly different process there, but you're not going to want to miss this. Very easy to do. Stay tuned. We had an oak tree spring up right there at the fence line. It's actually pushing the fence over, so it had to be handled, but I decided I was going to let it grow and mature a bit so that I could harvest the wood for this exact purpose to get some mushrooms established. And that's what we did. So we went ahead and harvested the wood while the tree was still in dormancy. So it's fresh cut oak hardwood and that's important. So this is what I was able to harvest off a volunteer oak tree. It's actually a pretty good supply of oak here and although some of these branches like this aren't really that large, they're still going to provide the habitat needed to get the mushrooms growing. Hardwood is what you're looking for. It's important to use fresh cut logs that you know came from a healthy tree. It wasn't dying back and being overtaken by other fungus issues which can happen with trees. So here's what the dowel plug spawn looks like. This is a wonderful package just loaded with mycelium. This is actually oyster mushroom spawn and there's a hundred dowel plugs in here. And here I've got some shiitake dao spawn. These are both going to be applied in the same manner. And here's my morel mushroom habitat. With this, all we're going to do is simply scrape back some mulch in an area about a four by four foot square. And we're going to mix this mushroom spawn in with the soil. With all these mushrooms, we want to get them established in a shady area under a tree canopy would be wonderful, mimicking that of a forest like situation. The best part about this whole inoculation process, you only need three common everyday items to get going. A drill with a 5 16 inch drill bit or 8 millimeter will also work, a hammer, and small little paintbrush. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by inoculating these shiitake mushrooms. Now we want to space our dowels 4 to 6 inches in a diamond pattern. So for those unfamiliar, that white material there, that's the mycelium. That's what's going to run throughout these logs and produce the fruiting body, the mushroom. All right, so I'm going to start off with this log. This is pretty much the perfect size. I wish all my logs were this size. So I only want to drill as far as the dowel pin goes down, which is an inch. We'll just measure that out. Piece of tape is all that's needed. They do make a stop collar for the drill bits. I just don't happen to have one on hand. And now we're ready to start drilling. So now we'll start on our next row of holes. And you only need to space the rows about two to three inches. So the diamond pattern, as you can see, we got one hole here, one here. So we'll just put one about here. So to give you an idea, I drilled about 40 holes in this log here. And these package of dowel spawn typically come in packs of 100. I'm sure you could buy in larger packages as well. But if you've just got a few logs, one of these is going to work for you. So now we're just going to take our dowel spawn, place it in the hole, and tap it on in. Just tap it down flush. Doesn't get any easier than this. Once inoculated, these logs can produce mushrooms for years to come, several flushes of mushrooms. And we want to try to keep the moisture locked in to the log. That's one of the reasons we don't want to put this out in an area that gets full sun. And when it comes time to waxing over these dowel plugs, you can also wax either end of the log as well. 
that's going to help to keep that moisture locked in. All right, so we've got this log all plugged up. Now it's time to grab our wax that we were melting on the stove and seal this in. All right, so the wax is good and melted. And now we'll just take our paintbrush and go over the top of each one of these dowel plugs. We got all those holes sealed in. And that's the process for inoculating hardwood logs. Very easy to do, my friends. I'm gonna continue inoculating more of these logs, but before I do that, let's go ahead and get the morel mushroom patch started. I'm thinking back here, beneath these goji berries, gets a decent amount of shade, just a little dappled sun back here. So we're gonna scrape back the mulch. Yeah, this is gonna be perfect back here. Now we're just gonna crumble this all throughout this area. We just want to work this in a few inches deep into the soil. Hopefully you've got a good amount of organic materials that have been breaking down in your soil. That's going to help provide the nutrition needed to get this patch rolling. And we're going to keep this patch moist throughout the summer months. You can also drape shade cloth over the area, whether it's the logs or the morel patch, if you've just got too much sun going. We'll also work in some more organic materials throughout the season. Whether that be straw, wood chips, compost, all that stuff is good. It's gonna take a while to produce. That's okay, we've got time in the food forest. And that's all there is to the morels. This patch is now established. So I'm gonna to continue to inoculate these logs before I put them in position. So I'll get back to you once I'm done with that. Check out the mycelium surrounding these oyster dowel plugs. Just enough. I got a little bit more I can dab up, get a couple more ends. That's why I didn't do all the ends in the beginning. I wanted to make sure I had enough for that. So these are all shiitake right here. And this would be a great place to lay them if it had a little bit more shade. Just up against a hog panel like that. And here we got all oyster mushrooms. You can see we just got a few branches there that were left and I'm going to use those to stack my oyster mushrooms and my shiitakes on top of. All right so here in the chicken run we've got a little canopy here and a tree that provides a good amount of shade so I think I'm going to place these oyster mushroom logs 
right back here underneath the canopy of this pineapple guava tree. I'm going to put down some lemongrass mulch and then these are the non-inoculated branches right here just to give it a buffer from the ground. We don't want to create competition for the mycelium that we're trying to proliferate plus keeping them off the wet ground is going to keep them from breaking down so quick. Like I said these can produce mushrooms for many years. There we have our oyster mushroom pile. I'm thinking back behind those gojis over there. You can see we've got full sun right now. We got some nice dappled shade under there. That's where I'm going to stack those up at. And there we've got our little shiitake patch. It's important you don't want to mix your mushroom logs, your spawn together. Again, you don't want to create competition. So you should have a patch in different areas for each type of mushroom. Mm -hmm. 